Isn't it wonderful to have bodies? Look how we all have them. Those, well, we don't, but... <laughs> that, okay, so that's completely a lie. <laughs> Look how many of us in this room have bodies. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? It's a beautiful gift to have a body. There's a gift in all things, friends. Sometimes we forget it, and we feel like we're being punished, and that's when confusion sets in. So this is a process of remembering What's actually true is that there's a gift in all things. Let's start right now with an opening process to align with the sacred space that we've already created, that has been created for us already. Just for a moment now, noticing the body, acknowledging the body. <coughs> Think about it, friends. From beginning to end. Our bodies are with us. They're our best friends. They're the only ones who are here with us through thick and thin. They're the only ones who've shared every single moment with us. So let's acknowledge the body as a dear friend, our best companion on the way, our most faithful companion. And just notice if there's any pain or tightness, pressure or discomfort, we can breathe into it like we would listen to any dear friend who's suffering. You see, it's like our best friend has shown us where pain is. And so let's not pick up our club and beat the best friend about the head and shoulders. <laughs> let's say, oh my gosh, I get that you're suffering. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Breathing into it with love. Sometimes that's all it needs, is just to breathe into it with love. Sometimes that's all it needs. And sometimes it needs more than that. And if so, then make a date to come back to your body, to give it the focus, the attention that it needs. And of course, keep that date. It doesn't work to lie to our bodies, friends. Maybe the first time maybe the second. After that, our bodies don't believe us anyway, you see? So make a date, maybe at lunch, maybe at the end of the day, maybe before you go to sleep tonight, and just come back to your body and breathe into the discomfort and say, I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to listen. I get it. I get it now. I can do better. I can do better. I can do better. And then be present. So now, let's draw the focus into the heart chakra, which is huge. There isn't a person listening that has a chakra smaller than the room that you're in, okay? So start with that, and for most of you, it's miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles away from that. Most people listening to this have chakras big enough to hold the earth inside of. The earth is eight thousand miles in diameter. So let's just start with that as our working theory. You see how we have a foundational assumption of how big our energy bodies are? We all do. That's natural. We have some kind of foundational assumption. So let's just take as our assumption that our chakras are big enough to hold the earth, 8,000 miles in diameter. There you go. And now align that heart chakra. There you go with universal presence, drawing light and love into the front of the heart, the fullness of that heart chakra. 8,000 miles in diameter, allowing it to bulge, expand, and then exhale out the back in a river of love, letting that river flow, letting it flow front to back, front to back, front to back. Friends, would it be okay if I use your names as I notice people's energy bodies? Would it be okay if I speak to you personally and say what, what's up? Is that okay with friends in webinar land too? My assumption is going to be it is. So Hartley, my dear friend, you're seeing yourself as so much less powerful than you are. So just expand now, holding the earth. And consider, friends, perhaps holding the solar system inside your energy body. There you go. 
There you go. And now letting source love flow through us and around us, front to back, front to back. That's much better, Hartley. Front to back, front to back, flowing through us and through our lives. Now gradually letting the focus ride out the back of the heart, connecting to that element of divine presence you're most personally comfortable with, finding it by feel, by vibration, drawing it into the back until once again it bulges and expands and exhales out the front. And now this river (laughs) of love is flowing in the back and out the front, through us, around us, through us and through our lives, letting the yawns happen, letting the expansions happen, letting this river flow front to back, front to back, front to back, through us and through our lives, through our lives, through our lives. Swishing those rivers back to front and front to back, creating turbulence, cleansing, clearing, <clears throat> even swishing that heart chakra clear from side to side, especially the part of the heart chakra that's behind our physical bodies, that 8,000 miles sticking out behind it, <laughs> swish it side to side. There you go. Nice. Now, let's draw the focus down, 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 down to the feet, through the feet, connecting into the center of the planet. Oh, and now into the center of the galaxy. Oh, and now into the center of the universe. You see, when we draw, when we're working too small, it doesn't work any better than anything else does. We have to just do what's, what's true, you see. And so connecting into source below, drawing up divine healing frequencies, Father Earth and Mother Earth, through us, around us, in an upward rising river of love, flowing through us and through our lives, letting the rivers flow from the center of the universe below to the center of the universe above in a straight line, in a straight line, from source below to source above, in a straight line, through us and through our lives, engaging in the eternal process of straightening the energy body. There's always more we can do. And if things aren't working for you right now, try straightening the energy body. Straightening the energy body, flowing through us and through our lives. Let it, there you go. There you go. Letting the energy wash through us. Straightening the energy bodies. There we go. 8,000 miles in diameter. There we go. Rising up to the crown and through the crown with our focus connecting into source above. Try drawing in the source energy from source above, through us, around us, through us, and through our lives. Getting that river flowing first, getting the energy flowing first will make all the difference in the world, through us and through our lives, through us and through our lives, flowing sky to earth, sky to earth, sky to earth, sky to earth. Now, swishing those rivers of light top to bottom and bottom to top, creating that turbulence, clearing, cleansing, drawing the focus to the intersection of heart chakra, and vertical channels, and instantly it expands into a huge bubble of light and love, creating safe, sacred, private, healing, growing, learning space for us to do our work in today. Noticing the outside of the bubble, strong, light, bright, resilient, crackling with light, with love, with electricity. It's clear that only beings that we invite in can join us. This is private, sacred, healing, growing, learning space. Let's ask now for all of our guides, angels, healing beings, light beings to join us, all the higher dimension beings who wish to be present with us. We're grateful, grateful for your presence. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now let's notice this vortex that's spinning around us, taking away everything that's being released, the very moment it's being released, leaving us continually in clear space. And now, friends, this vortex is bigger than the Earth. You notice that, right? Because your own chakras are Earth-sized, right? So we just let this vortex take away everything that's being released, the moment it's being released, leaving us continually in clear, sacred space. And now... Notice, right down the center of the vortex, there's flowing a waterfall of love, the living waters, sacred essence of the divine, washing through us, through the planet, through our lives, pooling at our feet, creating a beautiful foundation of love for healing, for learning, for growing. And for using this weekend, the opening of this weekend, to fulfill our intentions. So remember how at the start of a session we ask our clients, what are their intentions for the healing? And so friends, for you, for this weekend, 
Set your intention. Set your intention for whatever it is. Now we have two classes in one this weekend. Today's class is on conscious connection with the higher soul. And so the, a beautiful intention for today would be perhaps to uh, have the, con the intention to live our own individual soul plans, whatever those may be. And they're different for each of us. But this is a beautiful goal for any day, for, for life, really. So if you want to hold that as your intention for today, you can. If you want to hold something else as your intention for today, you can do that also. In this work, we never tell our subjects what their intention is. We can help them formulate it effectively, but it is not for us to do. We never impose our ideas of what someone's soul plan is either, you see. This is a way of helping everybody live their own soul plan. Now we can help them understand what their soul plan is, but we're not imposing it. Does that make sense? So whatever your intention for personal breakthrough is, it's important to hold one. It's not important. It's effective to hold one. It's empowering to hold an intention for breakthrough, to use this class to have breakthrough. Does this make sense? So far, so good? Friends, I want to remind you, and we say this in every class, but in order to teach in order to teach, we have to present things in a certain way. And so we have to remember that this is a learning laboratory. And we'll be discussing techniques. But we're never the decider of what technique to impose, quote unquote. You see, we're not, we're not the ones who decide. All we do is put our channels up and we, we do our best to be vessels for the guides, the angels, and the light beings, yes? So we're going to be pre presenting tools, workable, usable tools, but we're not the ones who decide when these tools are to be used. The reason we explain them is because it's not always so easy to understand what's going on. <laughs> and so if we understand what things might mean, it makes it easier to catch the clues as they're coming into the sessions, yes? In the, in the core curriculum, we have bookends, level one and level four. Level one talks about the alignment. It creates the field, the fertile field. Level two and level three drop techniques in. And level four talks once more about what's needed for the higher dimension beings to feel that we're a good candidate for them to work through. Those bookends apply to this class too. Higher level classes usually are more about techniques than about alignment. Does this make sense? The alignment is presented in level one and level four. Levels two, three, and the higher level classes talk about what fits inside the bookends. Yes? Oh, webinar friends, I'm so sorry, I forget to say this, but... It's important that your questions are answered too because there's as many of you as outside of this room as there are inside of the room. And so we need for you to feel comfortable asking your questions. So questions as we go. If we get behind, we may need to say, hold that thought. But the intention is questions as we go. Yes? For everybody. So we remember the foundation of this whole process is this. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. Why are you guys back there? That does, what, do you need to be back there right now, Stephanie and Chris? You do? Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure you were getting a good experience. To okay, good. <sighs> Webinar friends, you need to know that there are five people sitting behind the camera who are here supporting you right now. I just want to, to mention their names so that you know them. Wendy and Stephanie, Rick and Donna and Bob are all there. You can't see them, but they are here helping you. And so I'm very grateful for them doing that for you. And I just want you to know that about these beautiful people who are 
doing this. We're all volunteers here, you see, and they're volunteering that as part of their effort. We're literally all volunteers. I'm a volunteer. I don't make any money doing this. I support myself with my healing practice. We're all volunteers here. So, remember, the foundation of life is this. We're all spiritual beings having a human experience. Our souls have a plan for our lives before we're born. Then we're born. It was harder than we thought it was going to be. We get tripped up in fear. It's always fear that's tripping us up one way or another. It's okay. You see, this is the human condition. This is the sentient being condition. This is the incarnating condition. It's okay. And so rather than saying, oh, no, I'm not afraid, we say, okay, how am I being afraid right now? (laughs) It's okay, you see? It's okay. How am I being afraid right now? So here's the thing. These life plans, the soul plans, are those plans that are designed to take us most directly from where we are to joy. No one's ever being tricked. No one's ever being sacrificed for the greater good. That is not true.